Then there's another troubling new video from Project Veritas, which previously exposed Democratic operatives working to harass Donald Trump and provoke his supporters and then play the victim. For days now, the Clinton campaign and party leaders have denied any direct link to the very dirty tricks described in the videos, which have led to two people being fired so far. Watch. I've tried to um, uh, urge people to take those reports not at face value, uh, and not just with a grain of salt, but maybe even a whole package of salt. I have no evidence and no knowledge of that. Mr. Kramer was aside because he did not want to be a dis the, the, the kind of distraction that he is even at this point. No one who was working for the DNC or the Clinton campaign was doing that. This is, again, an attempt by Donald Trump to distract from the real issues of this campaign. We don't need any salt. We don't need a grain. We don't need a pound. We don't need a package. The Democrats fired two people in those videos for their antics. So if we're supposed to take them with a grain of salt, why are they firing people? But this new footage tonight is raising questions about the denials, about how they had no linkage to the Hillary Clinton camp, the DNC, they had nothing to do with the videos, a bad Democratic operative group, never heard of them. But, you know, the people have been caught on video saying that Clinton's campaign and Hillary Clinton herself were in on an effort to troll Donald Trump in what appears to be not an unrelated case. Using people dressed up as, oh wait for it, it's very clever, Donald Duck. It's not even good trolling, really. It may sound a little silly, but it could be a violation of federal election law. You see, Hillary's not allowed to coordinate with these outside groups. So she could be in a lot of trouble if that link is real. Listen here. Good news is the candidate would like to have a mascot following around the duck. I mean, following around the candidate, Trump. But the bad news is she wants it to be Donald Duck. And that's because Sklar mm -hmm. is an old Clinton man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had gone to some buddy of his who's one of her body people, mm -hmm. and she had explained the explained the idea of Hillary, and Hillary just loved it. She did? It's so lame. <laughs> How did you, what did you love about it? In moments, we'll talk about this with Sheriff David Clark and Richard Fowler, who are here. But we begin with our chief Washington correspondent, James Rosen. James? Megan, good evening. For a while this summer, Donald Duck emerged as a prominent figure on the campaign trail. Costumed individuals resembling the Disney character, as captured by Fox News cameras, showed up at Trump rallies, outside his Washington hotel, even harassing Trump surrogates in Congress, at all points chastising the GOP nominee for ducking the release of his tax returns. Now, in the latest undercover video from the conservative activist group Project Veritas Action, we hear once again from Bob Creamer. The consultant whose contract with the Democratic National Committee was severed after the first Project Veritas video last week, and who can be seen confiding to his hidden camera interlocutor the identity of the purported mastermind behind the Donald Duck's operation. In the end, it was the candidate, Hillary Clinton, that said that the future president of the United States who wanted ducks on the ground. But if I got people give ducks on the ground. And, uh, oh, so it's. Wow. Don't, don't repeat that thing. Don't repeat that to anybody. Creamer also alleges that Donna Brazil, now the interim chair of the DNC, intervened at one point to get the Donald Duck's operation moved out of the DNC to a progressive group called Americans United for Change because Brazil purportedly feared trademark trouble from ABC Disney, which owns the Donald Duck character. Yet at one point in this video, an assistant press secretary for the DNC is seen confiding that the organization still had a hand in the Donald Duck's operation. Neither the Clinton campaign nor the DNC responded to our request for comment. However, in response to last week's videos, both the campaign and the committee accused Veritas of selective in past videos, so perhaps, Megan, not with a grain of salt, but for the health conscious among us, a multi-grain of salt. I feel like you need, you need like a whole 
tequila rim full of <laughs> salt, perhaps. Before I let you go, James, I've, uh, forgive me for putting you in the spot, but you heard the person in the video saying, you know, it's, it's important. We have to be careful what we say. It's not we have to be careful about what we do to make sure we comply with the law. It's, you know, we don't want to be perceived as having broken the law. You once told me a f about a famous Richard Nixon quote to the same effect. Do you remember it sitting here now? Yes. Can you yes. tell me what it was? Yes, this is used in biographies of Richard Nixon. He was quoted once as saying, uh, you must show that you care, and indeed, you must care, uh, <laughs> which indicates a slightly uh, back-heavy uh, pri priorities list there. <laughs> I knew you. That's impressive that you got that. I, I haven't spoken to you about that in about eight or nine years. Great to see you, as always, James Rosen. Likewise. Thank you. Check out his book, A Torch Kept Lit. Uh, joining us now, David Clark, who's the Milwaukee County Sheriff. And uh, let me, Sheriff Clark, the thing is, Donald Trump may have given 15000 through his charity foundation to Project Veritas, but he didn't make Bob Kramer say these things, and he didn't make the other woman say what she said, and he certainly didn't make the Democrats fire two people in the wake of these uh, tapes coming out. Megan, these Democrat operatives are some scummy, scummy people. And every time we think we've reached the bottom of the sewer with them, we find out we have a long way to go. They are up to their eyeballs in corruption. Their model to win elections is to cheat, lie, and steal, and then if they get caught, to just send their minions out to deny. Uh, you look at what's going on here, and we haven't seen the end of it, but really what I find problematic is that uh, the Democrats don't care how they win elections. They just care that they, they, they win elections. But then 45 to 47 percent of the American public that is supporting Mrs. Bill Clinton they don't seem uh, to care about this at all. If she wins this election, I still don't think that, that this is over yet, but if she does, we'll spend the next four years with investigation after investigation. We still don't know the bottom of this thing, and we're going to learn it as time goes on. You know, Richard, as we are on the air right now, Politico's Hadass Gold just breaks this story saying that the same group, Democracy Partners, this is the same group that Mr. Kramer was associated with, a guy like, don't tell anybody I said that. Keep that stuff about Hillary to yourself. Don't tell Fox News in particular. Um, so that group, uh, according to Politico, coordinated also with, get this, going to blow your mind now, Breitbart. Right, Bre Breitbart, which is a conservative, you know, they think it's alt-right, whatever. Uh, right to hurt Marco Rubio, uh, to, let, let me just, I'm just reading this now. They coordinated uh, during the primaries to cover disruptions of events for candidates such as Marco Rubio. So you've got the groups on the left who dislike Rubio and the groups on the far <laughs> right who dislike Rubio. And uh, they didn't make Rubio go into robot mode when Chris Christie came after him. But the point is, these are dirty, dirty <laughs> tricks. And this democracy partners should not have been coordinating with Hillary Clinton. She was not allowed to do that. Well, there's two, two points here. One, there's no, he says Hillary Clinton, but Mr. Kramer does in those videos, but there's no emails, um, maybe WikiLeaks has it, who knows, that, could, that clearly connect Hillary Clinton to this Why group. Why would he want to but lie about again, her? He's trying to protect what, her. He's like, don't tell anybody. But once again, and I think Sheriff Clark said this last week when we were on together, is that politics is a blood sport. And unfortunately, Megan, thanks to Citizen United and cases like it, there's way too much money in our politics, way too much dark money. And yeah, this is you, the reality. The really, law, really dirty operatives dirty. doing dirty things. But this is the problem with this. This is the problem with super PACs, as Charles Cardheimer said last hour. The, 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 the lines are so murky because the super PAC laws say, me and you are working together today. I can fire you. And then you could go run my super PAC. And we could say there's no coordination. Mm -hmm. And that's probably problematic, which However, is why we have to repeal Sheriff it. Clark, you are a man of the law. And the law says you can't be a 501c4 organization, which it appears this group was, and, and, and engage in direct or indirect participation in a political campaign on behalf of a candidate. So if this group was taking its orders and acting them out on behalf of Hillary, as we hear the man say there, then they may be in violation of the law. And now it's just, it's not just somebody gets fired, it's somebody gets a visit from someone like you saying, come on down to the station and let's have a chat. You know, this is interesting because I think prima facie evidence uh, that there's some corruption and some collusion going on uh, in this thing. But who do you call on? I mean, normally I'd say 
you know, the Justice Department should step in here and take a look, the Federal uh, Election Commission, but those institutions are corrupted or at the, the highest it's, levels It's really the tax well. agencies, right, who would say, you're not, you're not getting your tax-exempt exempt status anymore. You're a political campaign. But here's the thing, too, that this is voter intimidation. This is straight up hardcore voter intimidation at some of these uh, Trump events. You look at the one in San Jose, California, where Trump uh, uh, supporters at that event were literally attacked, beaten, bloodied and injured. That is voter intimidation that if it happened on the other side, if there were uh, uh, the sure. Klan or, or other supremacist that, groups sorry. intimidated. That's not. And let me finish. Right. Let me, will you please let me finish yeah, my sentence. Sure. If the shoe were on the other foot and those things happened, everybody would be outraged, and they rightfully should be outraged. But now that it's the Clintons, of course, there's a different standard for them. They're above the law. All right, guys, i got to leave it at that, but great to see you both.